Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers uh, kind of knockoff -y third party style review. In today's video we're taking a look at the Black Mamba LS08. This is the Corvette Assassin or Corvetti Assassin depending on where you are located. I actually like the name they were teasing when they showed this guy off which was uh, Stabby McWheel Feet or something along those lines. I think that's that's a much better name for him. But yes, here we have Stabby McWheel feet. Here's the box, the spin around. It is, of course, uh, MPM style sideswipe in sports car robot mode there as well. Age of six plus and much like the Black Mamba kind of movie series, we do get the open window as well with the Corvette Assassin on the inside there. And here we have him out of his plastic prison. And as you can see, he does kind of come disassembled. Uh, we have his blades, which are hand ready. They can fit into his hands and we can twist them around. Uh, we get the doors. The doors come detached as standard. Uh, I know a lot of people won't like that because I guess that's uh, quite clearly parts forming, uh, but uh, you don't have to have them detached. You can attach them at the back of those arms. And then we get to two of these pistols as well, we have really nicely made, really good size as well. A lot of people are saying they're not happy with how short he is. Uh, the height itself does not bother me in the slightest. I actually think he scales remarkably well. And here we have him on the turntable with those back kibble sections on. No idea how they go. They're not actually shown in the instructions. It's kind of just one minute they're there, one minute they're not. Uh, same with the blades. Can't find any way to put his guns either. But he looks nice. He's a good interpretation of Sideswipe. Not perfect. I would have liked some more range on his head, but I'll cover that when we tackle the articulation. But it's quite clearly Sideswipe. He does look like Stabby McWheel feet from the movie. So I think they've done a pretty decent job there. And I like the fact we don't have to have those blades on the hands. He's a very well balanced figure as you can see here. He's got that uh, toe down and then the other foot planted quite nicely and we have hydraulics on the back of those knees as well. I like the fact that things can pop off and that you don't need to keep them on if you're more of a screen accurate person but to get full range of his transformation you need to have those doors attached to his back. Right now let's take a step back and check out his scale. We've got various different movie bots here. We've got the MPM Ironhide over here and we've got MPM Movie Bumblebee just here. We've got Legendary Toys which is the MPM Bumblebee just here. Then we've got Oversized and Oversized at the back there. We've got the Movie RCs and we've got our Wreckers all of different sizes. And we've got Hound over the back there. That's the Model Wizard version. We've got Black Mamba's big LS03 Prime at the back there. And just there, that is the Legendary Toys Optimus Prime with the Jetwing upgrade kit from Fans Wanted, which I've placed on his shoulders. And I'm going to mount a couple of magnets just inside those, uh, just so they hold on. It's not the perfect fit but it looks pretty darn good on display. What do you think? Uh, I would include a link just in the description below where I picked up that kit from over at Sir Toys as well but personally I think Sideswipe's size works uh, when you compare him to the likes of the MPM Bumblebee. I will have to go back and take a look but I believe the likes of RC and the Wreckers were some of the smallest then it was the likes of Sideswipe and then we had Bumblebee was a little bit taller. And then we get Ironhide, Ratchet, etc. on the next wave. And then we get the big guys like Hound. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. But I think personally that scale works. I think it works slightly better with the Black Mamba Prime at the back. I just think Sideswipe coming up to Prime's crotch is probably too big. I think uh, if you have him alongside the oversized bumblebee and then the oversized hound and then the black mamba prime at the back there i personally think that's the best 
we're going to get in that Bayverse scale. See, that is my personal kind of favourite lineup. But that being said, maybe Bumblebee's a fraction too tall. I don't know. It's so difficult to decide. I mean, if we bring in the legendary toys, Bumblebee, who's just a smidge taller than Sideswipe. Uh, then again, I think he looks a little bit too small compared to Prime, but either way, I think this can definitely work for different fans. I think there's definitely a market out there for it. And there's that awkward moment you dig out the Human Alliance Sideswipe, remembering that you uh, started off a custom figure and never finished it. <laughs> oh, I've got all of his parts uh, just off to the side. I never got around to kind of re-building him. He was designed just to kind of have him placed nicely on display and his head's in the box still and the tubing's all come out. But you can still get an idea of the scale. I mean, it's probably about uh, a couple of centimetres at best, uh, shorter than the uh, Human Alliance version, but he's definitely a lot more stable and, um, yeah. <laughs> Right, let's take a look at the articulation on this guy. Uh, the head does not look down. Uh, that's one of my biggest gripes. There's zero downwards on there. But if we lift it up slightly, we've got left and right there. We can go up and down quite nicely. Uh, the blades in the hands are not as tight as I would like. You can just pop those off. Uh, but unfortunately, the hands are molded. So they're kind of static in that position. That's, again, something that I would not have as a preference. Uh, we do have... Outwards on the arms, downwards, rotation all the way around. There is an upper bicep rotation in there. We do get a bend on the arm. Do you think the arms look a little bit too short? I personally do. We get some up and down on the wrists, but no rotation. Really could have done with some rotation so that we could have the hands rotated around and then have the blades kind of downwards, like so. Personally, that is how I would have preferred it, having those like that. But that may just be me. Uh, there's no real waist rotation in there because everything's locked into position. Same goes with the abdominal crunch. Nothing really in there because everything's folded in nicely. Uh, we do have these rubber sections on the legs, much like we get with the Human Alliance. And they do, like the Human Alliance, tend to pop out. Gotcha, like so, but there's a nice bit of flex on there, some really nice sculpting around those thighs as well. Legs can go forwards and backwards. We do have an upper thigh rotation, but again, really kind of expecting these to pop out of that socket on the back of the leg. We do have this nice hydraulic lift there, and then we do get an additional bend, so we can go full on chicken leg. Uh, again, love what they're doing at the back there, really nice sculpting, great use of colours, but nothing that we wouldn't expect from Black Mamba. They're kind of renowned for this. And we do get some rotation on these feet, which is always welcome. And we get the up and down on the heel spur. You don't have to have the heel spurs out. You can just pop those in and go just with the blade. And of course, having that tilt in those legs and the bend, we can go just full on wheels. But uh, personally, I do like this a little bit better. It's just a lot more stability. Just wish we could do more with those legs. These do hinder the joints somewhat. We could pop those out and then we'd have full range. But I think they really do kind of help with the tolerance levels and keeping them where they're meant to be. And I cannot for the life of me, however hard I look, find anywhere to store his guns. Uh, the guns themselves are pretty okay. Again, nothing untoward. I think they look pretty decent in hand. Uh, you've got some really nice posing options and you don't have to have these wings on. Uh, we know that from how he came packaged. He's actually one of my favorite figures. Uh, I know there's not a great deal to him, but I am genuinely very happy with him. Uh, if you look at the blades, they are slightly set differently. I believe, uh, again, nothing in the instructions, that these are meant to go on the inside. 
so that when we put the blades on, they take up more of that arm section. But uh, I don't know, I could be completely wrong. But what do you think? I personally like how he looks. I don't have the Studio Series version anymore to compare him to. But I think they've done a pretty good job jumping him up to that MPM level. My only real gripe with this figure is the face sculpt. Uh, I don't recall Sideswipe having a moustache. I mean, now I just need to find him a cowboy hat that fits. Does it mean does he look like Burt Reynolds? Now his cowboy appearance aside, I believe the tr correct transformation for the feet is rotating them round so the wheels are on the inside. It does look more like he's balancing on those wheels. But as standard, out of the box, he does come with those wheels on the outside. I think it's a matter of preference. Personally, I think I prefer them inwards like this, but again, it's up to the user. Right now, to get him transformed up, now you want to rotate these legs back around. You want to make sure that the heel spurs are to the front like so. So again, rotate those feet back around and bring these out to the front. If you have any weapons in his hands, remove them. Now is the time to do so. And if you move this section underneath the arm, that's going to come out. These are going to fold back in, and then this is going to come over. And as you can see, that's going to form the front of the vehicle. Come around to the back to move these wings out to the side, and this is going to come up. I love how everything here is folded up nicely. You can bring this piece down, that's going to lock in, and then this here is going to rotate around and then these again are going to rotate and then this is going to push in like so. I really like how they did that. That's a pretty ingenious method. Rotate these arms down and around so the wheels are facing inwards. Move the arms out to the side. Lift this bonnet piece upwards. And you can see that's going to lift all of this upper tab piece off. This is going to flip on the underside. And that's just going to tab into position. His head is going to push down. Just make sure that's square so that it goes into this groove properly, like so. And this whole section here is going to rotate. So making sure that the doors are clear. So that all turns like so. I think that is pretty darn sweet. If I do say so myself, these are going to come to the front. And this here is going to rock on this torso piece and this comes to the back. It's going to straighten up these legs and if you look just on the underside here there's these tabs here. Those are going to tally up uh, with a little bit of force and a little bit of a bend there. They should, he says, tab in like so and then we just want to bring the heel spurs back up. And if everything's gone as it should, these wheels should line up on the underside. Uh, if that isn't the case, like with this side, it's still out. That's just rectified by just popping the peg on that leg again and just making sure that this sits snugly underneath that bonnet latch. All right, now I've had no end of problems trying to get all of the panels lined up. I think the problem was being caused by these sections here. You need to make sure that this joint, which is like this is standing, you need to rotate that down so that you've got this lip piece here. And then this is going to slide in. Now this slides under this bonnet section. And these are just going to push and tab together, like so, so that the wheels are nicely lined up there. You'll notice I've just taken this piece off so we can see what's going on 
here. We're going to rock this section forwards. And where we've now got that gap in this joint, that should then line up nicely. And that's going to tab in and with a little bit of energy on and a lot of luck, this should all line up. He says, please, 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 please. There we go. And tab in beautifully. And there we go. There we have Stabby McWheel feet looking his best. I still haven't got those wheels lined up perfectly straight there because it's not quite rolling as it should. I wonder what I've done, but it definitely tabs together a lot better than how I had it. You have no idea how many times I've tried filming this video and every time I've gone back thinking, no, 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 they couldn't have given us a figure that doesn't tab in like that. I was making a right mess of the front. It looked like it had been in some form of car crash. It didn't look like a Corvette at all. It looked more like a snow plow. <laughs> there we go. There is a very beautiful Corvette. I'm not going to get all of my other transforms transformed up to show you a full comparison because that's very time consuming. But I will tell you that he measures in at around the six and a half inch mark, which is around 16 and a half centimeters. And width wise, he is three inches in width at his widest point on the wheel arches. And uh, again, that's around six and a half to seven centimeters. So he's not a bad size. He's kind of like a large deluxe or a Voyager class figure, but definitely not as big as our Human Alliance figures. And if we bring in Optimus Shine, that gives us an idea of how he fares. You know, personally, I think that kind of works, uh, whether you want to have it with these G1 style figures or not. Uh, it's a good figure. Uh, I'm much happier now I've figured out what I was doing wrong. Uh, if you take a look at the instructions, I mean, they are incredibly vague. We go from here and here we're kind of still transforming him and then suddenly he's transformed and uh, that's it. So I had to kind of guess my way around it. There aren't anywhere we can store these weapons from what I can see, which again is a shame. I would like somewhere to put them, even if we have them in alt mode as well. Some We can kind of have them coming off somewhere along there or same with the guns, but uh, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. At the end of the day, I've got a Corvette which holds together and I couldn't be happier. Link is in the description below where I purchased this from over at TF Direct. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy lives to watch my content. If you'd like to become a supporter for the channels, then please hit that Patreon link, pledging anywhere from $1 upwards. And until next time, for myself and Stabby McWheelfeet, aka Corvette Assassin, uh, goodbye.